So what is the best software pattern to use in Golang? Now this is a question that I seem to get quite often and that seems to be a very big topic on YouTube. Uh, so I want to dive into that today. So I've obviously made some videos on my channel around hexagonal architecture, clean architecture, uh, domain driven design and I've also gone the other way and done like a, not followed a software architecture pattern, right? So should you use one? Are they important, right? First of all, now that is very that is a question that is basically like, you know, how big is a piece of string? So let's say you're building a side project and it's just something you want to build for fun. You want to hack together and it's not something that, you know, you you can see making you money or it's worth putting in a lot of time into. It's just like a, it's like a small side project with a little idea you want to build, right? That is what codepost.dev is for me, right? So this, this Go application is a full stack Go application and I'm literally just using like an API package which just spins up like a fiber app um, embeds some like structs into it and it's it's not really following a let's say an, a software architecture pattern right now that doesn't mean I'm not using software architecture patterns at all so in here I actually use like repositories um, so for example I have like that separation with my database to know like what methods a repository might need like comments and snippets and, and users etc um, which is kind of like a small subset of a software pattern if you think about it but really that's just like good interfacing in Go, right? So I have all my business logic kind of tied into this API package I just have like a types package it's all just really simple stuff and then I've just got a web folder for the actual web view on the application so this project here isn't going to be naturally as robust it could be if I put the time into it a bit more but naturally it's not going to be robust as something that you think out a bit more like domain driven design or hexagonal architecture or clean architecture etc um, so that's where you have to make that decision yourself on is this going to be a production grade project or do I want to hack something together or is this just a really small service that doesn't actually or isn't going to get the benefit of something like hexagonal architecture right so that takes me over to another project that I've been working on recently, which is a booking system, which is actually needs to be robust, right? People are going to be taking bookings. It's more of like, hopefully going to be a production grade uh, system. And this is using hexagonal architecture with domain driven design. Uh, but this is because this application is very business logic heavy, right? And there's loads of lo there's lots of moving parts in the booking system. So for me, having some type of software pattern helps to ensure that I'm building a robust system and helps to ensure my business logic is well tested because as you can see you have like uh, service methods so you have like the register method or the set account details method and what that enables you to do is have really good well I say really good uh, it enables you to actually have a unit tested core right so I can then pass this core of this application through to uh, my rest API's or my lambdas or whatever I'm going to be using for this service right um, whereas you know, my code post application where I'm building something quick, A, there's not actually a lot of unit tests, which don't get me wrong, it could still benefit from, but there's not a lot of business logic in this app. It's just like a form to enter some code in to make a post on a website. I do some basic validation and I store it somewhere. And that's it at the moment. And I can swap my database out quite easily by implementing different repositories again. Uh, and I'm never not really gonna have a REST API for this project. So it's all just kind of in endpoints, the, the, the logic, right? And again, that's because this application just is not very business logic heavy and it was more of a weekend project. So to answer the question on the best service pattern to use in Go is use what you feel you need for the project, but actually think about it first. So what I mean by that is if you're building a side project, throw something together at first, right? Uh, or if, but then again, if you're building a big monolith or a bigger microservices or a series of microservices that are very business logic heavy, then a pattern like um, hexagonal architecture, domain driven design is, is probably going to be your best friend, uh, especially in a work environment where you know requirements are changing left, right and center, you might be changing database regularly or you might be going through a, a phase where things are changing like you've got uh, maybe a new solutions architect come in and they want to use DynamoDB and you've got everything using Postgres then you know, having something like Hex would just, you implement another adapter, right? But is that going to benefit you for your little side project where you just want to have a little Postgres database because you have free tier hosting online? Probably not, right? So, yeah, build build stuff for fun in your own time. Unless you want to build something serious 
or it's a really business logic heavy application, go with something with some type of software architecture pattern like Hex or Clean Architecture. At work, bigger projects, Hex, Clean Architecture, where it makes sense to, um, but don't like get too carried away with it. I think it's easy to get carried away with it. And also remember that building in your own time is meant to be for fun as well. And if you're doing something that's just going to take away that fun to a certain extent, then you know maybe just start hacking stuff together again and building stuff, which is, I think, what probably most of us decided to become programmers for anyway. And then once you've built something and it's getting usage, like I started refactoring this to some type of hex as well. So I've got like um, object value types and stuff in here now because I know it's an issue with this app where there wasn't a lot of heavy uh, validation on some, some inputs. And I use the kind of domain-driven design methods in here to then move this towards some type of pattern right but i only did that once i got a product out to production and it made sense to do so um but yeah just something to think about it's something like i say that a lot of people ask questions on uh, and i just wanted to talk about it briefly in this video to try and give some people some guidance on it uh, and just to talk about patterns in general and go um so if you want me to go over any more patterns more in detail drop a comment and uh, hopefully that's uh giving you some food for thought with your go projects